Welcome to the UK Made Easy podcast, where we help aspiring international medical graduates like yourself achieve their dreams of passing their PLAP2 and practicing medicine in the UK. Hello and welcome to yet another episode of the UK Made Easy podcast. My name is Saif and in this episode we're going to talk about a scenario uh, where you are faced with um, uh, with a patient who refuses to go with medical advice. Be it that they're refusing to take some sort of a medication, they're refusing admission when you think they should be admitted, or they want to intervene into the medication plan uh, of one of their relatives, uh, i.e. they are um, uh, the relative talking to you regarding um, regarding their mother, regarding their son, regarding their father, and the way that you're handling their case. This is actually one of the scenarios that put many of the doctors at unease, and the reason for such is that you're facing someone who deliberately wants to challenge you with your decisions or with your uh, recommendations for them. And uh, many of the doctors that, because we are international medical graduates, we're coming from different countries where um, uh, where things are, are, are not necessarily done the same way they are done in the UK. So there are many things that I wanted to highlight just to make sure that when you are faced with that sort of situation, you know exactly what to do, you know exactly what the patient rights are, and you know exactly how to um, try to get them on your side, try to uh, make them see the situation the way that you see it, and then you leave it up to them to make their decision. So first and foremost, when you are faced with a situation like that, let's give an example so that we are um, so we can drive the point home. Um, uh, we're talking about uh, someone who's had a stroke, for example, and then um, they've been put on warfarin and they don't want to take that warfarin uh, because they've had a bad experience about it with a relative. Uh, probably they've had some sort of bleeding that wasn't controlled and it did cost them their life, right? So as you can see, this is... Um, even though the patient does not want to take the medication, but right then and there, you know that they've had a bad experience, right? They've witnessed something that made them afraid of that medication. And the first thing that I want you to think about is that you actually acknowledge, right, that the patient has the ultimate right to make the decision for themselves. So that's very, very important from the very beginning because it's empowering. Now, if I talk to a patient and I tell them, you know what, by the end of the day, what I'm trying to do here is to explain the situation, explain why we are um, uh, recommending that you are being put on that medication, but it's ultimately your decision, right? So what I'm going to do in those few minutes that I'm talking to you, I'm still talking to the patient, I'm going to explain the whole situation. I'm going to highlight why it's important that you are put on that medication, and then we're going to see exactly what we can do about it. Right from the very beginning, if you say that, right, you avoid that sort of confrontation where the patient is absolutely adamant that they want to do what they want to do, and they're not actually listening to you. So if you acknowledge that it's their right to decide what they want to do with their life, whether they want to take the medication whether they, or, or not, whether they want to get admitted or not, that's their decision as long as they have mental capacity, which is something that we're going to cover later on in this episode. Right, so after you acknowledge, you inquire. It's very important that you inquire. What is the reason that you don't want to take the medication, for example? That's when you get do some probing and you get some answers about uh, maybe a story that they've had. Like I said, um, a, a, a relative has been put on that medication and uh, it, it did cost them their life because they had a side effect for warfarin, which is uh, uncontrolled bleeding, for example. When you inquire, that's a great way to include some of the ice questions that you might be thinking about so that you can get as much or you extract as much information about why they are making that decision. Now, it will help you to see their point of view as well. And that's when your IPS interpersonal skills will shine with empathy and with understanding and with putting yourself in the patient's shoes. Now, We've talked about mental capacity, and when we talk about mental capacity in these sort of scenarios, we're not talking about mental capacity in the, um, uh, um, the psychiatric uh, point of view, for example. What we're trying to do here is to check if the patient can understand and retain the information that we are providing them. So an example for that would be, do you know 
why it has been recommended that you are put on Warframe. So basically what you're trying to do is to check their information, their knowledge. What do they know about Warframe? Why is it important to them, right? And then you repeat that question. That's the whole point of retaining the information, right? That's the whole point of asking these sort of questions. You want to know and make sure that the patient is able to repeat back to you what you've said to them right but you need to change slightly the language or the way that you ask your questions right so you ask about why do you think it's important that you are put on warfarin right another way of asking that sort of question do you know what would happen if you are not taking uh, your medication if you are not taking your warfarin and then they're gonna say well they don't know or they're gonna tell you the risks that could happen especially that they've had a previous stroke for example right so it's very important to um, uh, insert uh, two or three uh, questions to um, uh, to check for their, uh, their ability to retain the information and to use it, right? And then you move on to um, one of the things that I like to call the good cop, bad cop scenario. And uh, I'm actually using that from um, uh, from the, the, the movies, that, the, the Hollywood movies that we see where someone is being interrogated and they're kept in a room and then comes the good cop who offers them like cigarettes and coffee and then he gets out when they're not cooperating and then the bad cop comes. But of course, we're not trying to um, uh, make the patient fearful or anything like that. Basically, what we're trying to do here is that we're trying to, the good cop here tries to bring out all the benefits that could happen if they are, if they follow the medical advice, if they take the medication, right? So you can say something like, you know what, uh, again, uh, following the same example that I've been uh, given with the war for impatience, Basically, you can say that, you know, that if you take warfarin, uh, chances that you might get a stroke will be uh, increasingly diminished, which is absolutely fine. And it's absolutely what we're looking forward to because it will enable you to do all the activities that you want to do. Now, it would be great if you manage to pick uh, some sort of activities that they like. Maybe they like to be independent. Maybe they like going out. Maybe they play any sort of sport. Right. So, again, use that to bring them in uh, with uh, on board with the plan that you're trying to uh, prescribe for them. And then the bad cop comes when the patient is not cooperating. And the way that you can bring this about is saying, well, you know what, you've told me, for example, again, I'm giving an example, um, you've told me that your, um, uh, your relative have had this sort of reaction uh, because they've been put on warfarin. Do you understand that if you do not take warfarin, what are some of the things that could happen to you? Given that you've had previous stroke, chances are you might sustain another stroke and um, I'm sorry to say but many people who go through the same thing that you've been through can come out of it with some side effects that might be permanent, for example. And we, that's a scenario that we do not like to see you go through. And that's why we think it's very important that you take the warfarin, right? So the good cop, again, tries to um, bring the patient on board with highlighting all the benefits that could happen from taking the medication or following the medical advice you're proposing. And then the bad cop tries to highlight all the side effects or how their life is going to be negatively affected if they do not, do not take uh, the medication or follow the medical advice. So you always try to vary your way of approaching um, um, that scenario between the good things, like the things that we want to happen, and the bad things or the things that we're trying to avoid, right? So you play around with that, do that in your practice and see exactly what sort of effect that could have on your patient. If you do that, right, and the patient is still adamant that they don't want to uh, follow your medical advice for any reason whatsoever. It is their absolute right as long as they're being able to retain the information. But because, again, your PLAP2 um, puts you in an FY2 uh, position, so basically what you need to do is that you need to consult a senior right before doing whatever they want you to do right and that's how you tackle a situation like that you always make sure to acknowledge that it's the right uh to go with your decision or go against it your recommendations or go against it it's um and, and the second thing that i want you to remember is that you need to acquire and probe so that you can understand why they are making such decisions and then you need to check their ability to retain their information please do not forget that part it's absolutely fundamental that you check the patient is able to retain information and then you play with the good cause.
stop bad cop scenarios. I hope this has been useful for you and please try to put it into action whenever you try to practice with your partners uh, these sort of uh, scenarios. If you have any questions or if you have any topics that you would like us to cover, we'd be happy to do so. You simply have to go to uh, our Facebook page, UK Meet Easy, or our Telegram group, post your questions and we'll get back to them. Thank you and I'll see you in a following episode. Thank you.